go live we're going live we're going live five minutes early perfecto let's get everything set all right boys and girls welcome to the stream let me get these all posted and then let's get talking Okay, let's go. Who's all ready? Who's all ready? Who's all here? Get your questions all ready for me, and then uh, I'm going to start giving you guys my thoughts. And yeah, give you guys my thoughts about what's been going on with the Sounders. Let's talk about the ins and outs of what's been going on. I was on a phone call with a player on the team before I went live, so I do apologize for the delay. Let's get started. Some say this is a curse, but let's talk about it. Okay, so Seattle Sounders lose to Monterey in the League's Cup to officially be eliminated. We finished bottom of our group ahead of us, Salt Lake, Monterey. We lose 3-0 away at Salt Lake, lose a 4-2, I think it's where it ended at. I stopped watching after, I think, when they scored from the opening minutes in the second half. 4-2 against Monterey, seven goals conceded in just two matches in the League's Cup. We embarrassingly crash out. That means we have four wins in 17 or 18 matches, and three of those wins only came because the other team had a at least a player sent off. So we only have one win in our last 18 matches against an 11-man team. One win. Guys, I've said it. I've said it in I've said it in countless videos. I've said it in so many videos. This team, this organization has become stagnant. For a year and a half, it has been, I would say t for the past 2 years, the Sounders have just started to fall behind in MLS. Outside of winning the CONCACAF Champions League, this team has been poor from top to bottom, from the head coach to the to the organization, the general manager, the front office, it has been bad. And I think these past two games in the League's Cup have been a true culmination of what's been going just bad for us. I mean, but I mean, I think that it's there's blame to go all around. Brian Schmetzer, tactics have been poor in MLS for the past two seasons. The players, there's so many players on this team that shouldn't be on this team anymore that are on such high wages. And it's the reason, if we apparently are tied on money, that we are not making signings. The LA Galaxy, Inter Miami, the Colorado Rapids, they're all making signings. Those are the three bottom half teams, the three bottom teams in the MLS this season. And they're making changes. We're a team that is slowly but surely trickling down the standings. And it's just, we're become so stagnant. MLS is changing, but the Sounders aren't changing. It's just so frustrating to watch from us. It's so frustrating to watch. And these League's Cup games were so bad to watch. The Salt Lake game, we were completely outclassed. Chicho Arango, who's a player that I mentioned... We should have signed. That should have been a player the Sounders should have looked to have been signing. We let. I mean, I got heavy criticism on Twitter for saying that we should sign Chicho Orango. Some people said, no, that's not the type of player we need to be signing. X, Y, and Z, whatever you may think. He absolutely has been killing it in MLS. And not only that, is he killed the Sounders. He destroyed us when he played. Then we play Monterey. You know, the beginning of that game, I mean, that was vintage Sounders for maybe like the first 25, 30 minutes. We, it was vintage. I was so close to tweeting, this is a Sounders of old. This is a Sounders I haven't seen in so long. And it kind of a bit frustrates me that why can't we do that on more occasions? This team is clearly capable of being a, a strong team to be on the front foot, to score goals, take the initiative. But then, I mean... The team of old, the team that we've been seeing for the past couple of years comes and creeps back at us. I mean, that's just basically been the Sounders all year. I mean, this game against Monterey may have just summed up the Sounders season. Started off really hot. Granted, I consider that a purple patch. That's just my philosophy for it. And, you know, I'm tired of seeing the excuses. I'm so tired of seeing the excuses from from fans, from 
from Craig Weibel, from Brian Schmetzer, from the players. I mean, it is just so, so hard to watch. It is so beyond hard to watch from this team because people are just excusing the clear, clear lack of ambition being so stagnant, and it's so upsetting to watch. Where do I stand on this? Where do things need to change? There's a lot that needs to change. I mean, Brian Schmetzer, I don't, again, I'm on the fence with Brian, and a lot of people had big issues with the players I said we should keep or sell. I mean, guys, the reality is these aren't your kids. These players are players. Rui Diaz, Nicholas Ladero make what? Combined, what each one make about $3 million a year. They're our most paid players. They, those guys are a shell of themselves. You saw especially today with Raul Ruiz Diaz. Injuries have so caught up to him. He's not that guy anymore. Nicholas Ladero, yeah, scored a banger free kick. That's his first goal from that is not a penalty since the last game of the season against San Jose where that game absolutely didn't matter one bit. So, you know, Ladero just doesn't look like himself. If it ain't a penalty, Ladero ain't scoring it. Rui Diaz gets injured so often, and it's clearly caught up to him. Javier Arriaga doesn't play at all. It's on 600000 uh, a week. That's his salary. I mean, there's so many. Eber. I mean, Craig Weibel's 0 for 2. We, we signed Eber, who has, what, two goals and X games? Samuel Adenarin was a player that a lot of fans kind of had. I mean, if you kind of know, you know. He, he was a guy that we, we had, and... Uh, you know, he's 23, 24 years old, had high expectations from the games he did play. I think he looked really good. Didn't get many chances last season. We sold him to St. Louis City. He's already doing better than Eber, and he's 10 years younger than him, give or take, more or less. About 10 years younger than him. So he can only get better. Well, Eber's only going to get worse. I mean, Craig Weibel, you're already 0 for 2 in that regard, so it's not a great start by him. Rui Diaz, I mean, Ladero, I mean, there's so many players that just shouldn't be on this team. And the reality is the Sounders need to rebuild. Everybody in the league is changing. The league is changing. The league isn't the same from three, four years ago. The league has changed. This team needs to change. I'm on my knees. I think it's blame for the players and for Brian Schmetzer. They're both just not good enough. I'm I'm on the fence with where I stand with Brian, but with the players, I've said who we should keep, who we should get rid of. The fact that, you know, Leo Chu's a really good player, but like he is nothing special compared to great players the Sounders have had. He is great. He's a great young talent. But when you look at the likes of like an Oba Femi Martins, Clint Dempsey, Amaro Rosales, a young Freddie Montero, I'm trying to think of other players, Marco Papa. He's not nearly that good because the expectation has gone so low for this team. So, so low for this team. It's gone so low. And it's just like, guys, I mean, I know we're in like, what, fourth or fifth place in the standings. But when you watch every single game, this it doesn't represent how we're playing because of how bad the Western Conference is this year. Everyone in the West is bad. Sounders, they don't score goals, and when they do, the defense just concedes so many goals. There's no consistency. And, you know, I know this wasn't a talking point or something that was really mentioned, but the fact that against RSL, we played the back line of Fry, basically the same back line we played against Monterey. So we play that back line of Nuhu, Yamar, Jackson Reagan, and Alex Roldan. And we play the same one again against Salt Lake. The exact same defensive lineup. The defensive lineup that conceded three goals. The one that conceded three goals. And dude, RSL had 10 men when they scored the third one. I've said it and I'll say it a million more times until something changes. I, I'm not trying to be the bad guy. I'm not trying to be the bad guy. But this team needs to change. I know you guys might love Ladero. You might love Rui Diaz. You might love Jordan Morris. Ladero's not a player that should be our highest paid player. You look at other DPs around the league, he's just not that guy. Build the statue, but he has to move on. Rui Diaz, you know, arguably the greatest striker in Sounders history. I mean, has one of the best games to conversion rate. But we're holding on to these players for too long. Ouch, I, I hit my arm on my desk. We're holding on to these players for too long. It's like the Batman quote. It is exactly like the Batman quote. Die being a hero, but live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And that's what we're seeing with Brian, with the players, and Craig Weibel, man. That guy. I mean, when I watch every single press conference, it's so irritating to watch from him. So, so irritating. He's not fun to listen to, saying that this group of players is, is special and, like, this and that. 
let's bring in somebody. Let's freshen this team up. So, if, okay, if we have a tight, if the Sounders are tight on money, sell players. There are so many players that are dead wood in this team that still are getting paid high, high amounts of money. Change. There's nothing wrong with change. That's how you develop. That's how you grow is by making changes. If it, if, if you know, the, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. We've had the same team for about three years now. After MLS Cup 2020, this team was long overdue. Ladero had a year of constant injuries. I know he was a big part of us winning CCL, but last year was the time to sell Ladero. He's been flirting with going back to Uruguay with Nacional. I mean, one rumor doesn't, I mean, one rumor, sure, it could be a fluke. It could be a false rumor, but the rumor of him going back to Nacional has been going on for a couple of years now. And I love the video they just released of him, but Jesus Christ, my guy. Oh my God, he's making so much money just to score penalties. And I get it, that's not necessarily his game. But dude, DPs around the league, Mukhtar, Vela, Buanga. I mean, the players Inter-Miami are bringing in. And I know Inter-Miami is Inter-Miami, but LAC Inter-Miami, they have found the system in the salary cap. They're bringing in players like Bale, Buanga. Uh, a player, I forgot what his name was, but he was on the Golden Boy shortlist. Buke, that's what his name was, Buke. Golden Boy shortlist guy as well. Inter Miami, Busquets, Alba, constant young great players from South America, from Boca Juniors, River Plate, wherever. They're bringing in these players. While we are bringing in Eber. We've made two signings in the last two years. Granted, one was Albert Rusnak, but we're playing him at center defensive mid. When is Albert Rusnak played center defensive mid? And you can tell it is hurting his game. He is not the offensive player with that confidence of getting at least 10 goals, 10 assists for an attacking midfielder at Salt Lake. He's not that same guy. This team has digressed. This team has gotten worse. Four wins in 18 matches. That was worse form than when Siggy Schmidt got fired back in 2016, where we ended up winning MLS Cup. This is worse form than that. And three of those wins came against teams that had at least a player sent off. So we only have one One of those wins are against an 11-man team, which was against the New York Red Bulls. This team is dry. It's cold. It's not the same team it used to be. As soon as we decide we want to rebuild this team, last season should have been the start of it. We got rid of Will Bruin, which I think was a great start, but that was the only player we sold. The only player we, we literally sold an old striker to bring in an old striker. I mean, from top to bottom, Stefan Fry, he's almost 40 years old. Granted, he's a big part of why we've been successful, but he's 40 years old. It's the same thing with Ladero and Rui Diaz. Do we want do we want uh, Fry to leave as a hero, or do we want to keep persisting as he gets older and older? The blunders will start coming. We've slightly seen it, you know, those little cookie crumble moments. He has great moments, but he also has semi-bad moments. In Cleveland today, he was fine. Either decide, is Cleveland going to be the new number one or look for a new number one? Bring the age down. I wouldn't mind if we kept Fry's experience. Then in the back, you need to pair Yamar up with someone that is a, like that can be a guy that helps him out. He needs to be one of those guys. He needs, he needs someone with him. New who? He could be sold for a big amount of money. New who's, I know a fan favorite. I love new who as well, but he could be sold for really big money. He could be sold for really big money to a European team, and I think he deserves that next step in his career as well. For a guy that plays left back, that doesn't necessarily affect us offensively, and he's a good defender, but that just kind of makes him an average left back because offensively, Nuhu is not that great in all honesty. Alex Roldan can't defend to save his life. CDM role, don't want Rusnak there. Sure, develop Obed Vargas. I'm cool with the mistakes coming from him. He's a great pairing with Jao Paulo. The number 10 should be Rusnak. Liao Chu, I guess, deserves to be the left mid. Jordan Morris has been so cold since the beginning of the season. He has what, like two goals? What, in total this season, I think he has like nine goals, four of them coming against Sporting Kansas City, where at that time we're just a just terrible team. Just a absolutely terrible team. And the striker, I mean, there's been so... Chicho Rongo was a guy that I felt would have been a perfect fit, but people on Twitter wanted to criticize me saying, oh, we don't need a Rongo. We have Rui Diaz. He's our second leading goal scorer. So what? He's our second leading goal scorer. He has like four goals this season for a striker. It's not good. It's not good. 
We have a plethora of great young players. Atencio, Baker Whiting, Cody Baker. I mean, the list goes on. Danny Leva. We aren't a guy, we're not a team that, you know, develops the young players. Let's be honest here. We don't really develop the young players. Outside of Obed Vargas, no young player really gets consistent minutes ever since maybe DeAndre Yedlin. I know that's totally past the point. That's not the topic at hand, and I don't want this live to drag on anymore. I'll go like about five more minutes, and I'll start answering questions for you all. Let, leave me some questions now, and I'll start answering them. Um, but guys, I mean, this team today was the epitome of how much we have fallen. This match against Monterey was the epitome of the Sounders falling so far behind in this league. We are not a top team anymore. We don't play like a top team anymore. There are so many players on this team that just need to go that are on high wages. And I'm tired of the excuses. We don't have money. Then sell players. How is Inter Miami? How's LAFC? How's the Colorado Rapids? How are all these other teams making signings? Uh, Columbus Crew all making high level signings during the offseason. Then there's just us squatting. We are squatting. We're squandering. We are the definition of insanity doing the same thing over and over again, playing the same formation, playing the same tactics, expecting a different result. Brian Schmetzer has said, we just need a spark. We had that spark today against Monterey. We were up 2-0. If we went into the half up 2-0, shut down defensively, kept the clean sheet at least till halftime, we had a chance. We had that spark. Brian, I don't want to hear any more excuses. The spark was there. This team is not it. This team is mentally fragile. This team is not the team of old. It's not the team of 2014 with Oba and Clint that can dig you out of anything, or of 2019, where it can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any team in the league, where like when Atuesta scored that banger free kick in LA, a sold-out Bank of California stadium, can go back and score three goals unanswered. This is a shell of that team. We are knocked out of the Open Cup. We are knocked out of the Leagues Cup. We are not going to be winning Supporter Shield. MLS Cup is the last thing we have to fight for. This team is at the point where just making playoffs is good enough. And it's I, I know it's we won CCL last year, but to lose, to lose that unprecedented record of always making the playoffs was so heartbreaking because you could easily make the playoffs, especially now more than ever. I wouldn't be surprised if the Sounders keep slowly trickling down the stings. For how tight the Western Conference is, I wouldn't be surprised if we finished in a 7th or 8th place spot, one of the last spots in the playoffs. There's so many players on this team that need to go. It's up to you if you feel like Brian Schmetzer needs to stay or go. I don't know. A lot of people are, are I seem like they're Brian out. I'm kind of 50-50, slightly leaning more towards Brian out. But when I put out that keep, sell, George, a lot of people were upset at me with my decisions. Yes, we can still make the playoffs. But guys, I'm going to open it up for questions. I'm going to get a quick sip of water. What are your guys' questions uh, to answer? I'm going to start up. Is Chu the best player this season? I'd say th since the start to finish of the season, yes. I mean, if you go statistically, I would say it's probably Morris, but Chu's been the most consistent player this season. Look, I agree. We need to change, but saying we need to sell the entire team is completely un... I agree. I'm not saying let's sell the whole team, but the process needed to start last season. It needed to start last season. We needed to sell at least like two to three to four players. I mean, no one's going to pull a Chelsea and sell basically their whole squad because that's not going to happen. We've never seen that in the in the world of soccer. But these changes needed to start, you know, last season selling a few players because now we're left with more problems than we need at th this offseason. There's going to be a lot of contracts that are going to run out and needed to start last season. Uh, let me continue with what you guys were saying. Uh, I need to catch up. Chu has been the most consistent player, which is very true. Weibel said three, four players are playing for contracts this year. Okay, we'll see if that's even true. <laughs> we are a time cube, stayed in 2020, yep. With the way ownership is structured, do you think we will ever, uh, ever be successful again? Having so many different owners is terrible. We should have a single ownership instead of a group. You know, I'm not totally sure about the front office structure. That's not something I specialize in or I've really looked into. But in regards to Craig Weibel, I mean, since we lost Adrian Hanauer, it seems like things have been completely different. I think uh, Garth really held down the fort for most of this stuff. Meaning, well, at least being looking at four changes. No, because Hanauer is the majority. Oh, okay, Hanauer is the majority owner. I thought he was part of Inter Miami now. The multiple celeb ownership is more marketing than anything. You think Macklemore is carrying? No, Macklemore, Russell Wilson, Sierra, those guys, that's irrelevant. That's a publicity stunt. It's a, it's a trendy thing. Basketball players, celebrities, Ryan Reynolds, all those guys. 
It's a sl- it's it has nothing to do with it. Can we even make the playoffs? Yes, we can still make the playoffs. Uh, who should we get to replace Brian? That's a good question. You know, I think we would probably put if if Brian was fired, and I'm not saying I agree with it or disagree with it. Uh, it would probably be Precky for the time being, and then the team would have to look into probably by the end of the season who would they want to bring in as the main guy. I mean, I don't know off the top of my head who I'd want to bring. But there are a few good options. You know, I wouldn't mind someone in a similar mold of Tata Martino. Someone who has that, like, South American experience could bring that. Because, dude, I think Tata Martino changed MLS. With players like Miguel Amiron, Joseph Martinez. And then began the domino effect of bringing, like, Pity Martinez, Ezekiel Barco, uh... Thiago Amada, like that, he changed, he revolutionized MLS with bringing South Americans in this league. So maybe somewhere like that. Uh, Do you know, uh, sorry, which players would you like to sign? Chicho Rongo is a big one. There's one, I can't officially announce it, but there's a player the Colorado Rapids will be signing in the next one to two weeks. It hasn't been officially announced that I would say we should have signed. That's my opinion. I think we should have signed this guy. And you guys will see the post of that when that happens. Do you know any diamonds in the rough we can use for our team in regards to players currently on the team or uh, players that we could sign within MLS? I think one good guy could have been Julian Gressel. He, I mean, he was playing, I believe, on Vancouver, just got signed by Columbus. He could have been a guy we could have used. I think one that just signed on loan to San Jose was Akinola, A.O. Akinola from Toronto. I mean, we saw how good he was in his first season for Toronto. I mean, I'd love to see Samuel Adenaran maybe back. I'd have to really look through things. I mean, I think there's a lot of diamonds in the rough of players that we could sign from Asia, for example. I think that's a very hidden hotbed area that MLS could look into investing more in. We might need to replace Roldan as well. Hopefully not because his concussion problem. Yeah, he's now consistently getting concussion issues. What formation should we change to to the end of the season? You know, I think we had some of our best success. You know, something I, I've thought about, you know, I think is a big thing for us is at the end, you know, in I think one of our best seasons in the past couple of years was beginning of 2021. We we're playing the five in the back formation. We had one big star of Raul Ruiz Diaz, but that was it. Nico was out for pretty much all that season, and same with Jordan Morris. Not too many egos. It was more of a systematic team. We had one superstar in Rui Diaz that scored all the goals, and I think that's the same thing we need now. In my opinion, I just think we have too many cooks in the kitchen right now, the Sounders. What is Brian going to do with a Rusnak, John Paulo, Ladero, Chu, Morris, Rui Diaz, Eber? There's too many offensive components. Build a more structured team. Because you can see how much of a headache this is for Brian having to shoehorn Ladero out on the right or to the left. Morris at sometimes at striker at left mid, right mid, Rusnak at CDM, which you can see has clearly affected his game. I think we played some of our best soccer in that five in the back formation. It wasn't necessarily flashy, but we played a very systematic team style that really it fit the team, not individual players, if you guys get what I mean. Sounders are so lost. It's just so sad. I agree. They they have they do look lost. Do you think we'll prove after the break? First game is against Atlanta United at home. Do you think we have a chance to turn things around? A big positive, in my opinion, now that we're out. This is the only positive I'm going to be talking about in today's uh, video. Now that we're out of the League's Cup, in my opinion, it gives us a break, really, to reflect on things. To be like, where are we as a team? I mean, four wins in 14 games, one, only one of those wins being against an 11-man team. Where do we stand as a team? And I think exiting early gives a lot of players a break, will help us get a lot more players recovered, but injuries has not been an excuse. We played our strongest lineup today. The strongest lineup has played many other games too, and it has folded yet again. This team's just not good enough. I don't want to hear injuries as, as an excuse. Every team goes through injuries. Then bolster your squad so you have depth on the bench. It's so simple. We've been complaining about the injury thing for three years. You've had three years to bolster your team. That's not a valid excuse. Will we change things around? Based off of what we've seen, Atlanta United are now a team semi-struggling. They have a lot of star players that get them out of j- like they get out of jail free cards, those players. I wouldn't be surprised if we lose uh, in that game. We always lose to the struggling teams. We've seen it. San Jose, uh, Sporting Kansas City, Austin FC, we're Charity FC, so I don't see it happening. 
Is Yamar even reliable anymore? Yes, he plays well on occasions, but is also lackluster at times. I agree, and that's same thing with Jackson. More so, I think, with Jackson Reagan. But yeah, Yamar today got sent off. The game against Vancouver away where we lost 2-0, I was at that game. Me and all my friends said Yamar looked bad as passing from the back. And I do think if Yamar had a center back that complimented him a lot better, I think AB's a little bit more of a better fit, in my opinion, than Reagan is. Reagan is really good at distributing the ball as obviously has a lot of potential on a low salary. So those are big positives, has great distribution. But defensively, which obviously he's a center back, the guy gets diced when he's up against a good player, which we I think the biggest moment we saw that was with Chicho Rongo, and especially in today's game. I'm going to take a quick sip of water, and then I'll continue for questions for another five more minutes to make this end on 30 minutes on the dot. Let's see. Eber, Rui Diaz, Ladero, Alex Roldan, Nuhu, Fry, and possibly Reagan, Rusnak, Roldan, Montero. What do you think? So from those players you said, Eber, he needs to go. Bad signing. He luckily, I mean, his contract ends at the end of the year. Rui Diaz needs to go. Too many injuries. And we could still recoup some money for him. He has scored some goals. He has shown some moments of brilliance. So we could recoup money on Rui Diaz. Ladero, his contract ends at the end of the season. Don't renew him. Give him the ceremony. That's it. Alex Roldan. Can't play defensively. I'd sell him to another MLS team. New who? Let him make that big step to, to Europe. Fry, if we make those sales, I'd keep Fry for experience. Reagan, you know, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I think we should keep him. Rusnak, he should be the guy we should build our team around. Christian Roldan, I think he's one of our best players. I know he's had a lot of injuries, but give him another chance. Montero, he's on the lowest amount of money a player can make in MLS and has the most experience excuse me, most experienced of all the players on the Champions League, Europa League. He's on the lowest amount of money and barely plays. And when he does play, he does score goals. We can't deny that. I think as many as Ed Bear with way less minutes played. Do you agree that Moore should play center forward? You know, we did an interview with Hercules, or I did an interview with Her Hercules Gomez, and he thought that Morris's best position is at striker. In my opinion, if we can make really good money off of Morris, I'd say sell him. Morris's position of, is he better on the wing? Is he better at striker? It's just such a headache. Just, it's such a headache with Jordan Morris, man. He was so hot at the start of the season. Granted, it's just a lot of tap-ins and headers. The guy, I mean, two injuries later, we know his biggest attributes is his speed. He's not fast anymore. He's not a technical player. He's an okay player. If we can get a really good offer for Morris, I think we should take it. There's offers from teams last season, but instead we gave him a bigger paycheck. I know he's our leading goal scorer, but guys, he, he's he been so cold since the, since the hot streak. So cold. And that's just typical Morris. Splash the cash on a Marcelo Gallardo. I mean, hey, he's a good player. I don't see why it's not a bad idea. Have you ever uh, watched football? I'm a huge Seahawks fan. I'm a huge football fan. I hope you can try and watch football. No, I've, I actually am not a big American football guy. Uh, I've never actually even been to a Seahawks game. Maybe if someone offered me a ticket for free, maybe. Do you think Portland or Seattle uh, is better this season? You know, Seattle in the standings is doing better than Portland. But, you know, I think Portland have a lot more X factors. You know, Gio Savarese, he can bring his team up in the big moments. Unlike Brian right now, you know, he always brings them up against us. He brought them out in the League Cup. Granted, they squeaked out of the group, but they still got out of the group. They at least got that one win, which Seattle can't, couldn't even do for themselves. They couldn't do that for themselves. And that's just, I, I'd say Portland's a better team because they know how to show up for the big games. I agree. We should look into the Asian market or sign young players from South America like Amada or Facundo Torres. Yeah, two really good players. Too much overlapping on Seattle. I uh, I don't totally get the context behind that, but sure. Do you think we should sign a big-name player like Griezmann, for example? Griezmann has shown he's interested in joining the Sounders. Antoine Griezmann has shown he... I mean, he's not joining the Sounders, but the post with him in the Mariners uh, uniform. I apologize. I, I take, uh, Don't quote me on what I just said. He has shown that he is interested in, at least, I mean, in Seattle sports. He had a Mariners uh, jersey on. I think Griezmann will be a great player to bring in. Granted, we aren't a team that brings in flashy players, but I think Griezmann's a guy that, you know, he can play in a lot of, he plays striker, center forward. He's played out wide. Granted, I wouldn't play him there, but I don't see why we shouldn't get Griezmann. I don't know why we shouldn't adapt with MLS a little bit. Buy one big star. One big star won't hurt. 
build the team around him. Get then other players like a Ladero Ruidias who are good in Liga Emekis and Ladero who's good in the Brazilian League with Ajax who are a little bit unknown quantities but have that European pedigree, that big game experience. Bring him, surround him around a player like Griezmann. you got to make a decision of where you want to build this team around. Which DPs do you want to keep? The reason I say keep Rusnak is because he's the youngest of the three DPs. And realistically, Sounders can't sell all three DPs in one window or get rid of all three DPs in one window. You've got to keep at least one. And with Rusnak, I see the biggest potential with him. Garth went all on, yeah, on CCL contracts and tied us up in 2022 and 2023. Next season, we have two DPs and two TAM spots available. We also incorrectly attributed Eber to Greg. Okay, interesting. We do have a lot of spots opening up if we do not renew most of the players that have contracts at the end of the season, if we do not extend their options. We are fast-tracking ourselves to becoming the Galaxy, but the difference is we, are, we aren't we are located in LA to be able to sign players like Ricky Pouge. That is correct. Why is our budget so tight? So many teams in MLS have actually have depth, and we literally have no one. So the reason other teams, like, you know, when LAFC did it, when they brought in Bale, Buanga, they had Chicho Orango, they had Vela, they brought in Buk at the end of the season. They're using loopholes. Uh, they tie players down to, like, TAM contracts. This is from what I know. I don't, again, don't quote me. This is what I've heard from many creators, from people inside the MLS space. They sign them to, like, TAM or lower deals, but give them, like, real estate uh, endorsement similar to like Messi, so that's where they get that extra closer to DP money. But it's not a DP contract because it's not actually giving them that money. But they give them it in assets and other expenditures to give to the players. And us, the reason our budget's so tight is because we have players like Ladero. I've made a post about this. Uh, I would actually, it would have been great to pull this up for you guys. But I have a post about this where like Ladero, Rui Diaz make about $3 million a year. Uh, Javier Arriaga makes about six hundred k a year. And I think he's like the seventh most paid player, sixth most paid player. And he doesn't play at all. Eber makes over $1 million. Roldan, Christian Roldan makes over $1 million. Jordan Morris makes over $1 million. There's a lot of players that make a lot of big money that just aren't good enough for the team. It's very simple as that. That's why our salary is tight. Instead of selling players and letting players go for free or letting their contracts run out, we've extended them to even more money. I hope the Sounders can finally win games as long as it needs to change. It's like the Sounders are lost in the world where there's no way to find a path and a, a win. Very sad. I agree. It's tighter because guards signed everyone through 2023 for CCL. That's correct. Do you think the sloppiness around the back tonight could be partially attributed to Cleveland? Granted, we've been struggling defensively, but it looked like the defense wasn't coordinated at all. Yeah, I don't think Cleveland looked that great in tonight's game. And maybe that's an indicator of maybe he's still not ready to be the number one. Maybe, you know, another thing you could think about is you could sell Cleveland for good money. There's plenty of MLS teams that are interested in signing Stephen Cleveland. Sell him if you want if you think you're going to sell other players in other positions on the outfield, keep Fry for that experience, the transition for that one to two seasons. But don't be surprised if maybe there's a kind of a big, big drop off because we see that with keepers at a certain point. Every keeper is different. They have that big drop off in performances. We could sell Cleveland. I don't mind. Just make a decision. Do something with these players or money that we have. Let's stop being stagnant. But Morris's left foot, it doesn't have one. You know, it's crazy to think that since 2016 to now, Jordan Morris has been at the club since 2016. He's the same player, if not slightly worse, since he came into this league. Isn't that kind of sad to think about, guys? That's the problem I have with Jordan Morris. He's been in the league for seven to eight years, and he is not any different from the day he joined in 2016. You keep saying we can recoup money on Rui. That's not how the league handles players' contract. Full stop. This isn't England. When I mean by recoup money for Raul Diaz, it is we can sell him for money. I don't know exactly how that works, but you can still sell players because he's still under contract, I believe, next season as well. Sounders need someone like Victor Rodriguez in the midfield. Yep, exactly. Or like maybe Nicholas Benazay, for example, to add that on. Man, we are about to have the funniest 50th anniversary. Yeah, that's going to be another part that's going to be interesting to this whole dynamic as the 50th anniversary is coming up. It's so depressing to watch teams make signings and we're just sitting here. It's very frustrating. I remember last season, it was horrible to watch. Th watch This year is the same terrible season. I was so embarrassed that we couldn't even beat Portland. It's Yeah, I know. I was at both of the games against Portland, away and at home. It wasn't fun to watch. 
Do you think some something small or big like rebranding or a new logo could change the environment of the club? No, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't do anything. What changing the logo? Does it change how the players play? It doesn't change how the tactics uh, are played. It's still going to be the same team. That's not how things change. These aren't ways you change the club or change a win, uh, a losing streak. Thank you for answering my questions. Of course, I, I appreciate you watching today's video. What are your thoughts on uh, extracting oil from the Cascade Mountains to become like Saudi Arabia, like a club like Al Nassar to sign in Bop Day? You know, hey, you got to do what you got to do. The Saudi League's doing what they got to do, and they're improving Asian football day in, day out. Uh, we actually, I, I would argue that the Seattle Sounders might have three of the worst designated players in the league. If you combine the goals of Ladero, uh, goals and assists maybe, of Ladero, Rusnak, and uh, Rui Diaz, I think they're probably one of the lowest of all the DPs in the league. I mean, Ani Mukhtar alone has more than they do. Bawanga alone has more than they do combined. Hanging the CCL banner in front of the Timbers was a hubris, and we <laughs> and we've been suffering since. We've been suffering, actually, in my opinion, uh, since I'd say when we lost to Salt Lake in the twenty twenty one playoffs. You were saying how this season would be the same before the season started, and man, you were right. I was I was saying the same thing as well, and here we are. You know, I got heavily criticized. I was heavily criticized by people. For being negative, that, you know, oh, this team's going to be different. We only were poor because of the CCL and this and that. But if we need US or GM, you'd be a brilliant, brilliant on the team. Now, Sounders actually don't want anything to do with me, funnily enough. Someone tell Jay J- J- Inslee right now. That's funny. Um, I was heavily criticized for that. And, you know, I know outside, dude, CCL is just a, what, you play like four games, like four four teams it's what a total of eight games we were good for an eight game stretch in the CONCACAF Champions League but ever since those last couple of games in 2021 leading into the game against Salt Lake in the playoffs we've been horrendous in MLS I I, I don't know the exact stat but I wouldn't be surprised if we have a losing record in MLS uh, since then I would love a signing like Buanga and that is a similar player that the Colorado Rapids will be signing very very soon I'm going to switch MLS teams. What team should I support? Uh, the Colorado Rapids. <laughs> Hypothetically, the Colorado Rapids. I guess Inter-Miami. Everyone's going to Inter-Miami. Um, I'm going to just stay on for a couple more minutes. Let's get one or two final questions in. I appreciate you guys so much. Anyone that's watching this, uh, I'm just kidding. I'm not a Colorado Rapids fan, and I don't think you guys should support anyone else. I do. I mean, I Danny Leva's at the Rapids, and one of my favorite players as an Iranian, Stephen Bader Schwartz, there. So they do have a, a, a uh, you know, a small place in my heart, of course. But uh, final questions before we wrap up, boys and girls. If you are watching this live, I appreciate every single one of you. Smash the like button, please. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I haven't uploaded in a while. There hasn't been much to talk about with the Sounders, but I think as the season goes on, I'm going to wrap ramp up the content. We're talking about more of the ins and outs of things, not about the games really that much anymore unless it's a bigger game. Uh, fan cams will return, of course, over time. But smash the like button if you're here live. If you're watching this after the live, just you know, in the background while doing some chores, running some errands, on a run, I don't know. I appreciate you listening, watching this video. It really means a lot. I mean, I'm just a Sounders fan, just like you guys. I have no affiliation to the team. Just giving my thoughts and opinions. And please comment your guys' thoughts and opinions. Where do you think the Sounders need to change? How can things improve? It's it's As a fan, you're open to be able to give your opinion. That's all I'm just giving. It's my opinion. So make sure to do that. Smash the like button. For the final questions, any big positives so far from this season? I think... I think a positive, weirdly enough, is we're seeing that this, this this team needs to change. And I think that can be a positive. It's just time to turn the leaf on this team that has been here since like around 2017, 18. This core, like these core group of players. It's time to turn the leaf. And I think Liao Chu, at least as a positive player, he is a, someone that's come to his own. Granted, I still think he could be better. But compared to how he's been the past couple of years, there has been some improvement. So I got to give him credit where credit is due. So that would be my two positives just off the dome. Hopefully there's a chance to win against Portland in September. Got to end that losing streak against Portland. I agree. As contracts expire this season, Sounders have the option to sign four to five big new players. I'm personally excited. I agree, and hopefully that happens. 
as long as we don't uh, uh, extend players' contracts and uh, and you know let them go, it's going to be a good opportunity for us. The Timbers are going to cook us. We'll see. At what point would you become Schmetzer out? The point where I, I mean, I would, I mean, in my opinion, I mean, not making the playoffs last year, being one of the bottom three teams in MLS last year, I think could have been a warrantable point to sack Brian Schmetzer. At what point would I be Brian Schmetzer out? The moment we are in the one, like the last or second to last playoff spots, in my opinion, before it gets too out of control, I was going to say maybe if we weren't in the playoff spots anymore, but to the point where we're in one of the last playoff spots, where we're hanging on to dear life to just making the playoffs. For the fact over 50% of teams don't make the playoffs, I mean, fifty over 50% of the teams, I apologize, make the playoffs, the Sounders should easily, regardless of they're good or bad, should be making the playoffs. Because I wouldn't be surprised if Inter-Miami get back, like because right now they're the worst team. But I wouldn't be surprised with all the additions they made, they make the playoffs, and they finish in maybe a half-decent spot in 7th or 6th because they go on that hot streak. We've seen the Sounders do the same thing. They go on a hot streak and do that. Uh, last question. I ain't excited. I think this rebuild is a two to four window rebuild, which is the earliest would take into like 2025. I agree. If, if the Sounders did win, then uh, then there's always something to talk about. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Boys and girls, that's going to wrap up today's live. We were here for about 40 minutes. I appreciate I truly do. I appreciate every single one of you who came from Instagram, Twitter, wherever. I appreciate you guys. Bottom of my heart. Smash the like button on today's video. Share this with whoever you want to share this with. A buddy of yours that might feel the same way wants another perspective of a Sounders fan. It really would mean a lot. If you guys are watching this uh, as a video, not as part of the live, I appreciate you guys watching up to this point. Smash the like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. I told you I'm going to start ramping up content near the end of the season. And boys and girls, I hope you'll have a lovely day.